Welcome to Town Church Worship for Everyone. Well, it's great to have you join us wherever you are today as we gather for about half an hour to worship together. And a special welcome, uh, if this is your first time joining us, we hope that you feel fully part of our online worship today. We're going to begin our time by singing two songs of praise to God. And the first one, uh, as we gather together in worship, so please do that at home, sing along with us. The words will be at the bottom of the screen for you to do that. And it's the song I will worship, and I'm going to zoom and get on the bass guitar. My girls, you kick us up when you're ready. So we're going to introduce a new song today, which is all about us being thankful to God for always being faithful. Okay, so this is a new song and uh, we'd love to teach you it today. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to sing through the first verse and chorus. Uh, and then we're going to start from the beginning of the song again for you to join in with us. Uh, the way the song works is there's normally a couple of verses and then a chorus, couple of verses, chorus. Uh, and then a verse and a chorus at the end. And it's really, really simple. And it picks up some great characters from the Old Testament. So Bethany, do you want to lead us in? We're going to sing the first verse and chorus, and then we'll go back to the beginning and we'll pick it up together. Now we built the most enormous boat We kept the birds and animals afloat
once again. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Daniel lived his life for him. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to so we can pick it up even better. Uh, Katie, can I hand across to you uh, just to do a brief prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you that we can gather together through social media as church. Thank you, Lord, that our church is alive. And thank you that we can bring all our worship to give to you now. Amen. Amen. Well, we're now going to hear our Bible reading. Oh, sorry. Is that me saying that? Or was that going to be you, Carol? It's going to be mummy saying that. It's so, mummy, over We're going to, to be you. hearing our Bible reading now, so it's over to Vista. This reading is taken from Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Vusa. Brilliant. Well, what's going to happen now is, uh, if you've joined us the last few weeks, this will be quite familiar. If you keep watching this video, there's going to be a talk from me, which is number three in our series on keeping calm in difficult times and thinking about being thankful. And if you then click on the link separate to this video, then there'll be some all age activities to focus on exactly that same theme. So join in with one of those or with the other, or maybe with both. And then we'll meet up again for some prayers and a final song. Have fun. Well, it's great to be able to share with you today after having had a break for Liberation Weekend with Mike helping us to think about the whole theme of freedom. Today we're going to pick up again our series on keeping calm in difficult times. If you're just joining us for the first time today, then we're looking at some words from the Apostle Paul from his letter to a church in the city of Philippi. And they're found in the New Testament. And they were words that we heard just a moment ago from chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. And as we think about how we can keep calm in difficult times, I'm taking that word calm and using each letter to help unpack Paul's words. So we've looked at the first two letters already. The first letter, C, reminds us to celebrate God's goodness. Look at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. At this time we can rejoice that God exists, that he's in control and that he is good all the time. The second letter of calm, A, 
helps us to remember to ask God for help. Look at verse 6 of Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. We can ask God for help when we're anxious or stressed or worried about anything. Because as Paul tells us in verse 5, the Lord is near. And so we can turn to him in prayer about anything. And having done those things, having celebrated God's goodness, having asked God for help, then we need to simply leave our concerns with him. That's what the L stands for in the word calm. Leave our concerns with God. I don't know if you're anything like me. I can pray to God when I'm feeling anxious. I can lay out my situations and requests before him. But rather than leave those things with him for him to deal with, the idea of casting them onto Jesus that we thought about two weeks ago. I take them back. I reel them back in if we're using that fishing illustration. I pick them up when I finish praying and I carry them around at the forefront of my mind and they weigh me down and they burden me. But God wants us to leave our concerns with him so we can know his peace. But how can we do that? Well, part of the answer is, I think, found in two small words. Be thankful. Be thankful. They're there in the middle of verse six. You may have missed them. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Paul says, present your requests to God. And being thankful is simply focusing on what we do have rather than on what we don't. Focusing on what we do have rather than on what we don't. When I began this series, I described anxiety as simply a sense of unease, often asking the question, what if? But it also expresses itself in the words, if only. If only I had something. If only I was. If only they were. If only it. What if onlys do you have at the moment that lead you to be anxious, worried, at this time. We've all have had some of those before coronavirus came along. You know, if only I were thinner, if only I were richer, if only I had a better job, if only we had kids, if only the kids were gone, if only I had more time, if only I were appreciated, if only my partner were different. And then coronavirus will have brought its added set of if onlys. If only I could find some space. If only the kids could be back at school. Or if only I could be back at work. If only lockdown could end quicker. If only a vaccine could be found. If only people would do what they're told. Whatever if onlys we have, they can often lead to anxiety and stress and worry. So how can we find freedom and calm and peace that Paul promises here? Well, Paul's answer in verse six is that it's not actually when our circumstances change, but when our attitude towards them does. Pray with thanksgiving, Paul says, be thankful. And I think it's simply being aware of the blessings that we do have in life. Now, the anxious heart says, Lord, if I only had that, I'd be fine. But the grateful heart says, Lord, you've already given me this. Thank you. I get an email popping into my inbox each morning from an organisation called Full Focus, giving a daily tip for focused living. And last week, one of those emails said, write down on a piece of paper the question each day, what am I grateful for right now? And then answer it. And so this is what I put down for a few of my days last week. I said I'm grateful for being in Jersey with beautiful weather. I'm grateful for community, for my neighbours where we live. That was after our pop-up Liberation 75 celebration. 
I'm grateful for health and being well, when many aren't. I'm grateful for my family, for my wife, for my children. Then on Wednesday of this week, I'm grateful for birdsong in the garden and for sunshine on my face. Most of those are deeply unspiritual, really, aren't they? But they're just focusing on what I do have and not on what I don't. To use a phrase that might stick in your mind long after you've finished listening to me today, it's about cultivating an attitude of gratitude. Having an attitude of gratitude, I like to have phrases that I can remember. In every situation, Paul says, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So I wonder, what can you be grateful for right now, no matter how small it is? But we do have every right to question, I think, whether it's possible to live such a life where we can be thankful day in and day out. Well, encouragingly, the Apostle Paul modelled such a life. A few verses after the one we're looking at today, in verses 11 to 13, he says these words. I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. And I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Now, Paul's circumstances were pretty bad. He was in prison. He was under constant surveillance. There was no reason to hope that he would find release. And yet he can write with chains around his wrists and his feet. I have learned the secret of being content. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd like to know that secret. Something that, according to Paul, many people don't know. But it's there for us to see in verse 13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And the him there is Jesus. Paul could be content with what he had, which, to be honest, physically was so little because he focused on a different list. He focused on the person of Jesus and all he had in him. He had eternal life. He had the love of God. He had forgiveness of sin. He had the certainty of salvation. He had Christ and Christ was enough. For what he had in Jesus Christ was greater than what he didn't have in life. Let me say that last bit again, because I actually think it's the, the key to true contentment and lasting gratitude for you and I. That what we have in Jesus Christ is far greater than what we don't have in life. I think we often have what we might describe as contingent contentment, contingent contentment. You know, contentment that's dependent on whether we have certain things or not. And when we do get those things, the contentment diminishes because ultimately they don't deliver. But Paul shows us a Christ-centred contentment. And because no one and nothing can take away Jesus, then nothing can take away that joy. Can death? No. Because Jesus is greater than death and he showed that by rising from the dead on Easter Sunday. Can failure take our joy? No. Because Jesus is greater than our sin. He forgives it and us on the cross. Can sickness take our joy? No. Because God has promised, whether on this side of the grave or the other, to heal us. And can disappointment take our joy? No. Because even though our plans may not work out, we know that God's plans always will. And boy, how we need to hear those things in the current climate in which we're living. What we have in Jesus Christ is far greater than anything we don't have in life. There is so much we can be thankful for. There is so much we can be grateful for. And we can know a deep contentment that is grounded in the person of Jesus Christ. 
If you don't know that deep contentment for yourself and you want to find out more about how Jesus can provide it, then why not ask someone around you you know who follows Jesus? Or if it helps, why not email me at jamesporter at townchurch.org.je. Hopefully that will come up at the screen at the bottom. jamesporter at townchurch.org.je. And if I can help in any way, I will. Or why not simply do what Paul says here? To not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving to present your requests to him. Just talk to him. He is there. He will listen. He is near. And he will answer. But for all of us today, whatever our stage of faith, let's be thankful people this week. Grateful for all we do have. And in these difficult times, live out those words of Philippians chapter 4. Doing what we can do. Rejoicing in God. Trusting he is near. Praying about everything. And expressing great gratitude. And as we do that, we allow God to do his part, which is to give us the peace of God. Have a great week. Well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, kids and families. If you've just joined us from the All Age Activities and clicked back onto the video, we're going to do some prayers now and we're going to focus on saying thank you to God. So if you haven't got some with you, you need to go and find some paper or card and some pens and pencils in order to be able to do this. See you in a minute. Brilliant. Well, we've got our paper and we've got our colouring pens. Um, so what we're <laughs> well going done, to Rosie. do is, yeah. um, I need you to all think of everything that you can be thankful for Ooh. right now. Mm. And there are a number of ways you could do this. You could write down all the things on your piece of paper that you're thankful for and say a prayer to God, thanking him for them. You could write down a prayer on your piece of paper and use that prayer yeah. to... Uh, talk to God or you could draw something that you're thankful for and create a masterpiece um, So whichever way you're going to do it. Let's pray parents help your children with this. Let's do it together Do it as a church family. Let's pray Hello and welcome back so we um, We hope you have had some good ideas and we are going to now we are going to tell you some of our ideas so go on johnty what did you come up with to say thank you for so i came up with thank you for vegetables family um the wi-fi and tv very important <laughs> um water parks oh yes and everything everything mm -hmm. there we are thank you for that and how about you karis do you have anything you came up with i said thank you for food because otherwise we wouldn't survive and what food is that particularly? Fish and chips. Fish because she loves and it. and chips, the healthiest option you can possibly mm. have. Anything else from the girls? Anything in particular to say thank you for? Uh, thank you for music. We have a lot of that in our house. We do? <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for books. Oh yeah. Avid reader, Rosie. Great. Well, we're now going to finish our time together by handing across to Bethany uh, as she introduces uh, the end of our service. So we're going to finish our worship today with a song all about God's goodness, God's faithfulness to us. And uh, it's a really nice song, uh, enabling us to respond to what we've learned today in worship. So feel free to join in, feel free to listen, uh, and may this song help us know God's peace today and for the rest of the week. Been held in your hands. 
Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you're an amazingly good God who is always faithful. And so we can thank you for so many things. We particularly thank you now for how you always keep your promises and are always with us. Be with us this week in everything we do. May we know your presence with us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, that's the end of our service. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then before you leave, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, do share this service if you found it helpful uh, with family or with friends online. We'll be here again next weekend and uh, we look forward to seeing some of you on Zoom for coffee later on at 4.30. Bye bye.